a mirage. Yes. What are the New Orleans Saints? A mirage. A mirage? mirage? Yeah, mirage. 100% confident in that? Yes. Cool logo. It's a decent one. The Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. Yeah, they, they, it's a decent logo. I do like the black and gold color scheme as, as they're uh-huh. rolling into town. Uh, the Saints do come to at t Stadium for the home kickoff for the Cowboys this weekend. And they are coming off what was the most dominant performance of any team in week one as they just absolutely beat down the Carolina Panthers. And it was two guys turning back the clock. Joe Derek Horn. Carr. No, not Joe Horn. Uh, Joe Horn. They, they beat up on Joe Horn's son, J.C. Horn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Derek Carr, who looked as good as he's looked in recent years. And then the big one was Alvin Kamara. Kamara looked back to kind of the guy that he's been for several years. What was that? Go Vols. Is that a Vols? V-O-L. I've never seen that before in my they life. They just came up with it like five years ago. And it's so stupid. Gang signs. That's yeah. what it looks like to me, Chop. Uh, Alvin Kamara looked really strong in this game. They've got Jamal Williams, too. So they've got a strong, physical, punishing running duo now that they're, they're really going to lean on. So we'll find out pretty quickly, okay, was what Dallas was able to do against their run last week, was that legitimate or was it a little bit of smoke and mirrors? Because... Cleveland was down some running backs. Cleveland was down some offensive line help. What is the reality of what the running defense is now? Because New Orleans is ready to run the ball, and they've got a new offensive coordinator there this year by the name of Clint Kubiak, who Clint Kubiak came from San Francisco. I was going to say Gary. Gary, I was going to say Gary. No, well, he he did come from Gary uh, for for Shannon Sharp means (laughs) he came from Gary. Uh, But he came from San Francisco. He has been spending time with... Kyle Shanahan and the entire 49ers coaching tree and coaching philosophy, which means that a lot of what they want to do is they want to establish the run and then they want to build big passing plays off of play action. And so he's that's a lot of what they did last week. They were running the ball. They were getting success doing that. Then they were hitting big plays in play action. And so that's a big setup for what they'd like to do this week. There's some questions about who's going to be available on the defensive side of the ball because they're too probably most notable defenders that people know in terms of name wise outside of like Cameron Jordan, Marshawn Lattimore, and then honey badger. Both of those guys are DNP so far early in the week. Both of them. There's questions about whether they're even going to be available in this game. Matthew had played really well before he got hurt in the game in week one. He had a fumble recovery. He had a couple tackles. He had played well and had to help establish things, but they've got a very deep secondary. If Dak wants to try and, throw the ball on New Orleans, that might be a little bit difficult because they do have a strong secondary. And on the other side of it, they can run the ball really well, set up the play action pass and cause some problems for Dallas on the defensive side. Hmm. So I, I think there's a little bit of me that wonders, obviously it's not a 47 to 10 team. Like that's not who they were last week is not who they are in general, but there is a part of me that wonders if they might be able to just put some pressure on Dallas. They're a nine and eight, eight and nine team. That's all they are. Yeah. They were nine and eight last year. One of these middling. They're Derek Carr. So you're <laughs> nine and eight, middle of the road. They were nine and I didn't. Even, I never, never considered to think of them as like a above five hundred team last year. I figured just thinking about it, they were six and eleven. Cowboy audio of the week, though. You want to talk about attitude and swagger? You didn't even mention Chris Olave in that preview. We know how good of a receiver he is. Trayvon Diggs was asked about him yesterday. What challenges does Chris Olave bring as a receiver? This is a trick question. <laughs> this is a trick question. He could play. And you got to look at Diggs' face while saying this back to the reporter. Play it one more time, Pepe. Trayvon asked about Olave. What challenges does Chris Olave bring as a receiver? This is a trick question. <laughs> this is a trick question. He could play. Man, that was stone cold. He said it as well. I was like, okay, Trayvon. I almost expected him to say, you weird for that. Yeah, uh, on the right. back end of that. <laughs> what, what do you make of that? Uh, does he, does he, has he done that before? No. I mean, he gets, he can be a little. He, he's Olave short. last year had his rookie year, by the way, 72 for 1,042 and four touchdowns. Last year, Olave had 87 catches for 12, for 11, 23 and five. He's damn he's good. Really he's a good, good player. He's really good. I think that that's it's one of those things where Diggs is generally short in media to begin with. Like he's not very detailed. He's he's kind of quiet. I think that given that nature, when it's something that obvious to him, that he's a little like, 
yeah, yeah, he's good. He's really good. That's like, I mean, are you going okay, so to you, you ask me how good Amari Cooper is? You think he was kind of giving an attitude towards the question? Yes. Okay. I think he thinks that that's silly to ask, like, how good Olave is. Okay. Like, to him, it'd be similar, like, are you going to ask me, like, did you ask me last week, like, is Amari Cooper a good receiver? Yeah. yeah he, he's really okay. good. Like, it wasn't shade. No, I think it's more like, that's that's a ridiculous question. Yeah, do players, that's the thing, like, you know, because we, do players like it and asked about other players? I assume the answer is no. Yeah, in general, I think if they're matched up against them, they they don't mind. I think they understand. Okay, this is what you know the breakdown is. This is what I'm seeing on tape. These are the kind of things that I'm approaching. But in terms of the like, are they good or not? Or, do, or, or is that a challenge? Yeah, it's a challenge. He's don't good. take it too seriously, dude. It's all right, don't be Orlando Scandrick. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, media's in there. They're asking their generic questions, but um, I, I like the swag. No, it's I, I mean. Honestly, the the one that was always really uncomfortable to ask questions to was always Amari. Because Amari, you would ask him a question. It, was, it wasn't it was that energy, but it was similar in that you would ask Amari a question. And if he thought it was dumb, he would never just... A lot of guys will just answer your question and go, I'm going to guess this is what they meant and not stop things down. Amari would look at you and he would go, what do you mean? And then they would explain it and he'd be like, that doesn't make sense, though. What are you, what are you saying? 7 o'clock edition of Below the Belt because Babe Laufenberg on at 840 as we are previewing the Saints on the home of the Cowboys. Yeah, and one of the things that you're going to see a lot of with the Saints is that, like I mentioned, there's a lot of play action. There's a lot of different things that like to do that. But there's also a lot of trying to push the ball towards the middle of the field. So a lot of the stuff that you'll see crossing routes and different things where they're trying to pick guys off and hit deep crosses, similar to the way that Kellen Moore used to do things here. Kellen Moore always used to set up play action, deep crossers, and kind of space guys out and pick guys off in the secondary. You're going to see a lot of that from New Orleans as well. But the big thing, this whole basis is going to be, I would guess the first couple drives, they're going to come out and hand the ball to Kamara and say, let's see if Dallas's run defense is actually fixed. Is he the one, is he the guy that's past the age of like 27, 28 that, can, that just hasn't slowed down or is he slowed down? Kamara, Kamara had looked like he had slowed down the uh, slowed down the last couple of years because the last couple of years he was averaging three point nine yards per carry or something combined over the last two years, and he's just been he's been dinged up. He's twenty nine now. Yeah, he's still a receiving threat though. I mean, he's still a threat in general. Like he he's showing that they he need looked, to free him. I need to get. I need to see him somewhere else for the final two years of his career while he has something left. Someone who will be able to track him down if you watch the Cleveland game is Overshown. Yesterday, people were up in arms because Overshown couldn't get his number zero because Jerry won't take it from Rowdy. So that was a side topic. See, that's different. Rowdy is double zero. Yeah. So I don't see what the issue is. <laughs> there is no number zero. Rowdy doesn't wear zero. Unless, there's a, unless Mrs. Rowdy wears zero. KNC has to ask Jerry this on Friday, the Rowdy number controversy. I have i don't know. I've heard, because we asked him about it. I've heard... That there's somebody who maybe wants zero that has said they have dibs on it. Another and player. I, yeah, and I can't say who. Okay. But it sounds like somebody has feels like they have dibs on it. And so they told him, no, I'm trying to buy up my jersey inventory because I'm... I've got claim Is on that. There I'm not going to say initials. Who. Micah Parsons. No, I'm not going to say who. Listen to <laughs> Micah Parsons talking about Overshown. I thought this was an awesome clip yesterday. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I can't. I was like, bro, you got people on Twitter thinking you faster than me now. I was like, I said, I can't take no more breaks. I said, I said, them fresh legs is getting you. I said, I said, um, but now nah, he's so fast. He's explosive, bro. And I told him after the game how proud of I was him because you know. We talked me an overshone girl relationship last year, and you know, through the t- over this time, he's recovering. I just, che- just, check- just kept checking in on him, and you know, when throughout camp, I was checking in. I was like, "Man, how you feeling? How's your knee?" And you know, to see, you know, all those talents and everything that you know we all saw in camp, just so having that injury, uh, come out there like that in the first game, his confidence through the roof. Man, he just got me super excited. Like, yeah, you're faster than a forty, but. From what I understand, the combine, y'all team yard splits about the same. So his burst is. Oh yeah, he's 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 going. There's no doubt about it. He's going. I mean, but he's. I don't think people realize how explosive he is. Right. You know, he he's coming downhill with intent, with everything. I think I think he's one of the most exciting players that I've seen. That no one's ever get to. See. I think he's going to be an All Pro player. Boy, uh, it's nice to hear Clarence Hill's been listening to uh, us here on 105 Through the Fan when we talked about those 10-yard splits. Uh, th- thanks for tuning in, Chill. Uh, He's a master of giving credit. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he tagged us during the Jerry interview. Yeah, he, he, he was good about that. Um, but no, yeah. it's. I'll tell you what I take out of that more than anything is I'm listening more and more to Micah lately when he talks, and I'm trying to read. Are we hearing any maturation? Yes. You think we are? Oh, my God. The past two months, I, I want to give him the credit while I can because I was part of the opposite uh, in the offseason with what I what, what I had to say. Since that point, this guy has been a model teammate and face of the defense, in my opinion. He said everything perfect in training camp and everywhere else. I don't know what happened. I don't know whether he's putting on an act for the contract. I don't know if some clicked, someone got in his ear, uh, whether he got his number zero or double zero. I don't know, but he's been totally different, I think, from a rough offseason. I think he's, Props. I think he definitely had people in his ear this offseason that said, hey, let's let's clean things up a little bit. Like, let's make sure that that we're doing everything the right way. We're being a pro. We're we're growing up a little bit. And you hope he's, he's taking his heart. It sounds like he has. I, I guess we won't know until, like, real adversity hits um, before we see how he reacts to some things. Uh, yeah. But- when the defense, if the defense one day gives up 38. Or he gets no sacks. Or he gets no sacks. Or, yeah, he shows up on the stat sheet and there's nothing. There's not a tackle. Remember, there's that one game last year, right? Not a Giants game, I think it was. Not a single tackle, mm-hmm. nothing. But whether it's Zimmer, whether it's contract, whether it's other players, uh, I, I think Micah has been pitching a perfect game with all of his responses it was, on it. It was really... Post game after the Packers game, I think it, there was a lot of tension. Like like in the immediate aftermath and the week after, I think there was a lot of teammates who were not happy with with the way that things were handled uh, totally by Micah. And so I think that this was kind of a moment where it was like, hey, let's look at this a little more soberly. You're about to get paid. You're you're about to represent the organization in a big way. You need to make sure that you're doing things the right way. And I think he has. And so he deserves a lot of credit for that. Yep. So that's the Saints preview with a seven o'clock edition of Below. The belt. Uh, Tom Brady was loving himself some Mike Zimmer during the Browns call on Sunday. Dak talked about it yesterday. He said, it's a defense that frustrated me all camp long. Their strength is confusing the quarterback. When you can do that for a split second and you have the pass rush that we have, it's awesome. And then Brady, during the broadcast, said there's just so much scheme challenge that he does. Forces you to hold the ball and wait for it to get open. And that's not where you want to be as a starting quarterback. I sent you a Colt McCoy for you to translate X's and O's film-wise, as Colt McCoy was talking about the difference between Zimmer and Dan Quinn's defense. Yeah, that was actually uh, Chase Daniel. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel. Colt uh, McCoy, what would Colt McCoy have said? Uh, I want you I want to, you to watch. Well, I, want I want you to, you to watch. watch Zimmer's defense. <laughs> now I want you to watch Dan Quinn's. <laughs> now I want you to watch this. Yeah, a lot of it was, uh, he, he was pointing out a lot of the different things uh, relating to the way that Zimmer shows pre-snap looks. And this is something that I was talking about with Brian on Love the Star the other day. The idea of, mugging in the A gap is, is what they call it. In terms of you got the two guys that are, are standing on either side of the defensive tackle. They're standing the A gap is basically both outside like both shoulders. Well, Dan on the did center. that too. No. Dan with, did not do a with lot of Micah. Dan did not do a double A gap. Not mugging. a lot. No. With Micah he did. Micah would do that. Micah would occasionally stand in the A gap, but double A gap blitz is the whole idea there is like when you, you're showing that pre snap is you don't know who's coming. Sometimes it can be both of them. Sometimes they can both drop back. Sometimes it can be one. And one of the things Chase Daniel talked about is you get press looks uh, from the corners. You've got the defensive line. You've got the linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. When he walks up to the line of scrimmage to Sean Watson, he's looking at it and saying, there's eight guys who are potentially able to blitz here from this look. And so he starts making protection calls and he starts motioning the running back in there. And as soon as he motions the running back back, they show the linebackers drop back and show, okay, just to let you know, this was a this was a dummy look. We're not actually blitzing these linebackers. And now you've adjusted your protection and shifted things based on, well, okay, now the looks changed. Now it doesn't even look the same anymore. It's no longer what I thought it was. And it kind of plays with the quarterback's head a little bit. Dan Quinn was big on static looks. Like, here's what it is. I don't want to risk that my linebackers aren't communicating properly. And one of them actually thinks they're going here or one of them thinks here in this. I don't think Dan Quinn always trusted the communication from his guys on defense. And so he was like, I've got to just put them in position, tell them this is where you are. Now just do your job because what I can't risk is you don't know what your job is. And then we have a massive bust. I'd rather just deal with the chances of you getting beat. And that's one of the things that Zimmer's trying to work on now is, be on top of your game because there's a lot of confusing pre-snap calls where you're supposed to be showing one thing and doing something else at the snap.